steel, the metal of metals, steel for structures, steel for bridges, for rails, for machines. Everywhere it is steel, steel and more steel. Steel is indeed essential for the rapid progress of our economy. It is the metal of the age. When India launched on a program of planned development, the need for more steel was felt. By the end of the first planned period, the shortage of steel became more evident. The annual production of steel in the country was about two million tons, but the demand was much more. So the development plans envisaged increasing steel production threefold in the next few years. In addition to the expansion of the existing steel mills, three new steel plants were planned at Durgapur, Raurkela and Bhilai. Bhilai in Madhya Pradesh on the main Bombay Nagpur Calcutta railway line was selected because of the availability of raw materials nearby. Good quality iron ore from Rajhara mines. Coal from Korba, hitherto unexploited. And limestone from Nandini. Another factor was its proximity to the markets of central and western India. An agreement was signed between India and the USSR in 1955 under which help from the Soviet Union was assured in putting up the Bhilai steel plant. Within a year, the project reports were ready and the sleepy village of Bhilai came to life. The construction involved the organization of human, material and financial resources on a huge scale. The cost of the project was estimated at over 1300 million rupees. About 500,000 tons of equipment from the Soviet Union had to be transported to Bhilai. Hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of concrete had to be poured into the foundations. New methods were adopted in the erection of structurals and mechanical equipment. At the peak of construction, nearly a hundred heavy erection cranes were in use. Engineers and technicians, both Soviet and Indian, toiled day and night alongside thousands of Indian workers to put up the plan according to schedule. The first stage of construction was completed in February 1959, when President Rajendra Prasad inaugurated the production of pig iron. It was not long before other sections of the plant were completed. Today, a gigantic edifice of steel dominates the skyline of Pillai. The Pillai steel plant today comprises three coke oven batteries, three blast furnaces, six open hearth furnaces, four rolling mills, and a power generation plant. The most important raw material for the steel factory is, of course, iron ore, which is stored in the ore yard. The ore contains impurities. Steel making, in a sense, is the process of liberating iron from its impurities. Coal is essential for smelting iron, but it contains many volatile substances which have first to be removed. This is done in the coke oven batteries where coal is heated to a high temperature in the absence of air. The volatile substances escape as gases and red hot coke is left behind. The coke is collected in quenching cars. The blast furnace is where pig iron is produced. Skip cars take the raw materials, iron ore, coke and limestone, to the top of the furnace and charge them in.
The mixture is heated by hot blasts of air to a high temperature about 1400 degrees centigrade. The impurities in the ore come out in the form of slag. Molten pig iron is tapped five times a day and collected in ladle cars. The slag being lighter floats on top and is easily separated from molten iron. The molten metal is poured into moulds at the pig casting machine. These castings are then sent onto foundries all over the country to be remelted for making castings. But the bulk of the molten pig iron goes to the open heart furnace for the making of steel. Here the pig iron is further heated and processed to a temperature of about 1600 degrees centigrade for nearly 12 hours. And now the white hot stream of steel is ready to be collected in big ladles. It's then teamed into cast iron moulds for making rectangular blocks of steel called ingots. These ingots have to be rolled into several shapes and sizes and so they are sent on to the rolling mills. But first the ingots have to be reheated so that these can be rolled. The most modern equipment with remote controls is used in all these operations. Advanced technological processes and methods of production which have been successfully used in the Soviet Union have been adopted. In the rolling mills, the heated ingots are rolled into various shapes and sizes. The rolling mills produce billets, rails and a variety of other structures for which there is an ever increasing demand in the country. The steel plant has already reached 85% of its rated capacity of 1 million tons of ingot steel per year. During the third plan period, the output of the plant is expected to be increased two and a half times. The many complicated machines used in the plant need constant attention. The maintenance and repair shop takes care to see that all the machinery works smoothly and efficiently. The research control laboratory helps the steel plant to keep pace with the latest developments in the technology of making iron and steel. In order to ensure high quality of the steel produced, it keeps a constant check on the raw materials used. The performances of each unit and the strength of the products are carefully tested. The aim is to achieve maximum output of quality steel at minimum cost. The operation and maintenance of a plant like the Bilai Steelworks calls for skilled technicians. The Technical Institute attached to the plant provides facilities for training workers in various branches. These trainees will man the many jobs in the steelworks in the days to come. Practical training is combined with theoretical lectures. A new township, Hlainagar, has come up near the plant. It has all the civic amenities. Bhilai is a happy example of Indo-Soviet economic and technical cooperation. It plays a significant role in the rapid industrialization of India. It marks a milestone in the country's progress. Bhilai is a symbol of the nation's faith in its own future. <laughs>